Hello and welcome to another squeaky joke tutorial and for those of you that are my usual followers today I've got something a little bit different and if you are new to my channel then hello and welcome and I do hope that you are staying safe and that goes for everyone but today I've got something a little bit different and if you are a follower of mine and you know me then you know that I like to do all sorts of crafts and I am currently building a mouse house a bit like a doll's house but it's for a mouse and this is my COVID-19 shielding staying away from the world not allowed to go out project back in the summer it was my garden but now it's my mouse house so I will probably try and insert a couple of pictures here so you can see what I am talking about. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how to make this Moroccan style light and I've had quite a few requests for how I've done it. So if I just flick the switch, you can see that it lights up. So I'm going to show you how I've made it. So bear with me and I will gather all of the equipment and I'll be back. So one of the first things I want to talk to you about is LEDs and you can find them, you can easily purchase them off of eBay. Um, equally, they are easy to find in things you may already have at home, such as these tea lights. Now I've already filched the one out of this. This was a flickering tea light and I took three of them out I took three of these, pulled them apart, took the bulbs out, and that's how I made my flickering fireplace in my house. But you could use the bulb from one of those, and that would give a flickering effect. I mean, these bulbs really are amazing that they can do all these things when you take into account how tiny they are. These ones, this one here is a three millimeter flashing color changing bulb and everything that this bulb needs in order to do that is in this that's it don't you think that's amazing it's tiny and it's a three millimeter one and what i wanted to show you is this end can you see how there are two different lengths of end there is a longer end and a shorter end and this one is the positive, the longer end is always the positive, and the shorter end is always the negative. So if I just bring my battery pack over, my red end is always the positive, and my black end is always my negative. So I can just twist this around. If I just bring, so I'm going to attach that to that, Bring this over. Oh, what else have I turned it on? Oh, no. I'm going to attach that to that briefly. Bring this over, and you can see that my LED lights not very effectively, but that's because I'm not holding it very effectively. But it does light up. Now, one of the great things about LEDs is that they are small, that they are tiny, and they don't emit much heat. Unlike a normal conventional light bulb, they don't get hot. So you don't have to worry about things. Um, also, they can be used in resin. So you can bury them in resin, cure the resin and use them, but that's for another day. So what we are going to be using today is a string of bulbs, <coughs> a string of LEDs like this. And these are ones that I picked up in the pound, in the dollar, uh, not the dollar store, because we don't have that in England. We have pound, pound structure, things like that. I picked up some of these bulbs, some of these strings of lights. And can you see that they are on a string and you've got little bulbs. And there was probably, I don't know, 25 on here. And you can see that I have 
already taken the casing off because I wanted to use this switch for something. Now, what you probably didn't know about these is that actually each one of these bulbs can work independently. So you don't need to have them all strung. Back in the day, when we used to have Christmas tree lights, if one of the bulbs stopped working, that meant they all stopped working and you'd have to hunt through and find out which bulb it was that didn't work anymore. Well, things have moved on a lot since then. And with these LEDs, if you take one of these out, it's not such a problem. Obviously from the end, you can't cut it halfway through and expect them to all work. <coughs> Excuse me. But I can cut this bulb off of here and the rest of the lights will still work. And that is what I'm going to be using today. So it's quite fine. And I'm just going to take a pair of little scissors and I'm just going to snip and I'm going to snip it fairly close to the other one, not too close, but that's going to give me a nice amount of white to be working with. So I'm going to get rid of all of that, bring this over here, and this is what I'm going to be working with. So I've got my tiny bulb on this end. Let's see if the camera will focus. I've got my tiny bulb here and I've got all of my wire to use here. And I'm going to get myself a lighter and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. So with these, with this bulb that we've now got, there's no way of instantly being able to tell which is the positive and which is the negative other than trial and error. But there's something that we need to do in order to make these bulbs work. And this is something that if you've ever tried this before and thought, well, I wonder if I could chop one off and use it. And the reason why it doesn't work is because these wires, if they, these are just basically wires and Normally, if you had wires and you crossed them, it would short circuit everything and everything would stop working, which is why wires are normally coated in plastic. But to make these super thin, what they've done is they have coated them in something like a silicon or something like that. And believe it or not, it's so thin that you, can, you can't see it. But what we have to do is get rid of it. And the easiest way to do that is to get your lighter and to slightly burn it off. So make sure that if you are doing this, make sure if you're under 18, you are asking someone to help you with this. And all we're going to do, I'm just going to make sure I don't burn my camera as well. So I'm just going to light my lighter and I'm just going to hold it over the end. And you'll be able to see that that little flame kind of goes up. Can you see how it, there we go, it travels up a little bit and just burns off and it gives off a little bit of a smell and the wires do get a little bit hot so you can just move your hands out of the way but it gives off a little bit of a, I don't know what smell it is, it's not unpleasant, weirdly it's not unpleasant but can you see how now it's actually got a little bit of black on it and that's where the wires, and it soon cools, you know this is not hot to the touch anymore, soon cools. So what we can do is we can bring our little battery pack back and turn it on because we need to work out which is the positive and which is the negative. Because unlike a normal bulb where one's longer than the other, we don't have that advantage. So I'm going to curl this around so that you can see. And that's the good thing about these bulbs is you can literally curl them in any direction. So what I'm going to do is make sure the battery pack is in sight. So that's the positive and that's the negative. I'm just going to touch. What's the likeliness of me getting this right first time? Yes, there we go. Can you see how it's flashing? It's not making the best contact, but that is right. So I know that this wire here is the positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come down here. I'm just going to a bit of a bend in it here. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day we're not going to be using it like this. We'll have to check again but I'm just going to put a bend in it so that I know for now that that one is the positive. Okay so now we've got our wire ready. Let's move on to the next part. Okay so there's two more parts to the light that you will need 
or you'll need something similar. So you don't have to use exactly the same, but you'll need something similar. Now, I've got these because I sell them either on my Etsy shop or I've got them on my own website. And these are for making your own pendulum. So I've made paper bead ones and I will insert a picture now. And but you can easily make your own pendulum that you might hang up, that you might use for divining with. And they just screw apart. They come with this nice chain, they come with this little hooky bit. And these individually screw apart. So you can take the bottom off, like so. And you can take the top off. Like so. And then you end up with three parts. Now, for my purpose today, I don't need this. But in the world of doll's houses, that could possibly be turned into a rolling pin. So we can put that to one side for a minute. So that now leaves us with the base and the, with the base and the top. And what I need to do is I need to take off this. And I also want to um, take off, just so that it's going to make it easier, I want to take off this jump ring. I'm not sure if you call it a jump ring, but it's like a jump ring, but it's a twisty jump ring. I never like to get too technical. Like so. So I'm just going to put that one aside because we'll put that back in a minute. So I've now got this. And if you look... There's actually a hole up the middle of it, obviously where the post was. So that hole actually goes all the way up through here. And that's what we're going to use for our wire. So that's that. The next part is you're going to need some beads or a bead. And I have got a bracelet here with a collection of resin beads that I've made. And I just happened to be looking at um, a Moroccan candle and I thought oh they, they do quite look a little bit like those resin beads I've got upstairs and that's where I came up with the idea. So this particular resin bead has got lavender in it and I think a little bit of glitter as well. Got to have a bit of glitter on, mica powder or something and some of these ones are more opaque and some of them have got less glitter in so this one's just just like clear and gold. So you want to choose a bead that you can easily work with. I would suggest moving away from a bead that has that is completely opaque because I'm not 100% sure how the wire, how the bead will cope through one. You may get a very dull effect. It might not shine as much. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a bead. Now the thing about Pandora beads or these type of resin beads is that they come with a five millimetre hole. And that, although these have all got these bead caps on, these silver plated bead caps on, which I can leave a link to below in case you happen to be interested in those. These, oh, so I whack the camera, are more than enough for those three millimeter bulbs that I showed you before. And also, there we go, grab at this three millimeter bulb, plenty of room. And you could even fit a five millimeter bulb in there with plenty of room, but plenty of room for one of these. This is easily gonna fit in there, plenty of room. But obviously you want your beads without these bead caps on. So if you have never made resin beads, then don't worry. You don't need to go out and buy yourself UV resin, a mould, everything like that. You can buy Pandora style beads easily and you can get faceted ones. You can get, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that. You can get faceted ones. You can get all sorts of ones all sorts of really pretty ones so don't feel you have to make one i'm just using what i have made because um it's nice to kind of use up things that you have made in the past 
So that's what I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using a resin bead that I've made and I'm going to be using these findings. So and I'll leave a link to these in my description box below. So let's get started. Okay, so we've now got everything that we need. We've got our bowl, we've got our two pieces of our fitting and then we've got our bead. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start to feed our wire through and this is why it's much easier to use this style of bulb than it is to use this style of bulb because obviously this is a much thicker wire trying to feed this through and pull this out it's not the end of the world um, end of the world what you could do is to if you had a soldering iron is to solder some wire to these tips here and then insert that through. But even then, the wire that you're going to be using would be something similar to this. And you would be trying to get each of, so this comes stuck together. So you obviously separate it and you'd be trying to get each one of those through. And as you can see, one of these is much, much thinner. So that's why I've chosen this style of bulb. So what we're going to do is you're going to make a tiny little hook on the end of one of them so that it is easier to poke it through the hole and to get it to come out of this side, one of the sides. So I'm just going to thread it through and there you go. Can you see how it's popped itself out? And then you grab it, which is always easier said than done. If it's difficult, hold it in place and get your tool and these are just jewelry making tools these aren't anything like electronic tools or anything technical just jewelry making tools so now i've got enough that it's secure now what i need to do is i need to do the same to the other end so again a little hook just so that it gets around that corner and holding the other wire out of the way and this wire is tough wire so don't worry about handling it quite firmly and in fact whilst i'm doing this i'll just talk to you a little bit more about leds leds themselves are tough little puckers it's always quite amazing to me you know sometimes i play with electronics and i think oh god i really am gonna have done something to this led and it's not gonna work anymore but no it just lights up they are not like your conventional light bulbs that are, you know break easily they've got glass on them you know, it's easy to kind of damage that little filamenty bit inside. Um, I'm making this look really difficult. But it's really not. It's just a case of threading it through and getting it to come out the other side. But now you've got two wires in here, so it's a bit more tricky. <laughs> Patience is what's required. I think that's probably a bit much. But I always think it's good for you to see the realities of actually making things and that they don't work first time, but you know what? Just got to keep trying. I know it works because I made the other light. There we go. See? It does work. I don't know if you can see it's poked through. There we go. I'm just going to grab that with my little tool and pull. There we go. And then what you need to do is you need to just keep pulling kind of evenly each side through. And if it feels like it's a bit stuck, you might just want to straighten it from the bottom, pulling them out, pulling them, pull. There we go. And you need to now make a decision as to how much of this wire you're actually going to pull through. Because so if you take your bead, if I insert my bead now, you can see how the bulb actually comes out the bottom. Now you've got a little bit of play on here because we have got a little bit of wire on the end of this. So what we can do with that wire, if I can show you, 
got a little bit of wire on the end. So what we can do is just take that wire and fold it over, which gives us a little bit more room. Okay, I've just folded it over, but I still know that I want to pull more of this through. So not a load more, but just a bit more. So I'm just going to ease this through a little bit more. There we go. That is probably enough. And now if I check my bead, I can see that that bulb fits comfortably inside that bead. So the next part you will need to do is you're going to need to attach your bead to this one and then you will attach this bead to here. Okay, and what I would suggest is using something like, um, what you want to do is, I would suggest using something like Aileen's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. And the reason I suggested that over something like this is because, because this is a round surface and because you're putting your bead on, it's really easy to kind of say, yep, yeah, I've got it lined up. And then when you look at it, you're completely off where you need to be. And by then it's too late, it's stuck. So what you want is to have something where you can keep sort of moving it around, looking at it from all angles and thinking, and do look at it. You see from the front, that looked quite good. But from the side, I can see that's not in the right place. So you want something that you can kind of have a little play around with. So I'm just gonna squish some glue on here. You can easily clear up any excess glue afterwards <coughs> excuse me and pop it on and sometimes it's helpful to kind of line it up in the middle but i can see that that's i can see that's not quite where i want it to be i think that looks quite good look at it from all around not quite great that side shift it again Keep looking. Just remember, you're going to have this hanging up and you want it to be even. Any excess glue that comes out is really easy to clean up. And what I would do is I would just hold this for a little bit just to make sure that you've got a really good contact. And then we're going to do exactly the same with the bottom. We're just going to glue it on. So I'll come back when I've glued both pieces on. Just whilst we're waiting for all the glue to dry, I'm going to have a quick chat with you about battery power supplies. And when I first got these bulbs, they were attached to this battery pack. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says in there, there's space in there for two AA batteries. And each one of them is 1.5 volt. So that gives, with two batteries in them, a collective power of three volts. And that is for all of these batteries, these bulbs. And obviously I have taken one of them. So if you have a battery, so if you've got a battery, now I'm using these cells. And these are lithium cells and these are three volts each. And this battery pack holds two of them, so that's six volts. So that's an awful lot of power going through my one little bulb. Now I'm using this today because it's handy. I had it on hand and it works. But long term, that is going to be far too much power going through your little bulb and it would burn it out really quickly. It will, it could give it, it could kind of make it pop, not pop pop, but it could just give it a bit of a power surge because there's too much and stop it working. But for the purposes of today, I'm just using it briefly just to demonstrate. Now in my actual mouse house, I have a full circuit board set up in which I've got the right amount of battery power. So please check your battery power and yours 
and chances are that actually you even one of these batteries may even be a little bit too powerful if you had just one of those bulbs and then you get into the realms of needing resistors and all of that stuff so i'm going to leave the whole battery thing for you to sort out because that's not my area of expertise my area of expertise is ripping things apart putting it back together again and then hoping for the best so i will let you work out what you need but it's just to make you aware of the fact that whatever power supply you have you need to be bearing in mind the voltage okay i'll leave it to you okay now that we're back and everything is dry what you have now got to do is to put back the jump ring this little ring here back onto the top and this particular strand this particular chain came with this like little claw like little lobstery claw type thing and i didn't feel that that was particularly in keeping with the doll's house so i have chosen to take that off but i did like the chain and i felt that moroccan lights normally do hang down with a chain so what i have done is in order to kind of and it's kind of done it in order to kind of accommodate the wire what i did was i thread it threaded it through the chain now i may decide to do that slightly differently i'm not sure i'm not sure at the moment what looks best what i'm going to have to do is wait until i actually install the lights into the house and then work out whether it would be better to have these wires showing like this or whether it would be better to maybe twist them and run them up the back of the chain i'm not sure but that is how i have attached them and then you can just hang your chain up because we've got plenty of chain on here so you could have them hanging from the ceiling now moroccan lights look really great if you have two three or sort of five of them all hanging at different heights and you could choose different colored beads and yeah they look really great so i'm just going to grab this back over and i'll just turn it on for one last little peek at what it looks like when it's lit up and there we go you can see it looks really great now one of the things that you could do is you could put if you were making beads is you could add glow-in-the-dark glitter to your resin or if you bought a glow-in-the-dark bead because then what you could have is you'd have the light making the glow-in-the-dark bead glow charging up that glow in the dark element and then when you turn it off it would then carry on glowing because you've got the glow in the dark um, glitter or pigment or bead in there so that's just another little idea for you that's all of a sudden kind of popped in my head as to something that you could do so i hope you've liked this tutorial and if so give it a thumbs up leave a comment below i always really like to hear from um, people and know what they're thinking and um, if there's any other ideas or tutorials that you would like to see then please leave a comment in the box below really great for you to have joined me today and i hope you found that useful thank you very much okay so here we are right at the end with my idea for a glow in the dark bead so this bead when i made it I put glow in the dark glitter in it. So hopefully I've turned all of the other lights off apart from the spotlights and this has been um, cooking so to speak for about five minutes so hopefully when I turn the lights off it should glow in the dark. Ready? And now I need to turn this light off so you can see how much light actually these little bulbs do give out because that's it there's no other lights in this apart from just this so ready oh there we go that is the glow in the dark that is making that light come out so if you had a few of those that is gonna look really nice in your doll's house so there we go right lights back up lights back on
and I hope you found that useful. Thanks so much for watching. Speak to you soon. Bye.